A new toy to play with today. This is uh, a new CNC engraver and uh, this is a generic type that you can find on the on the market commonly. This has a, a, a working area of some 300 by 400 millimeters and this is the three axis version so clearly you can change the the height there which is the Z and left and right which is your X and the Y on that stepper motor. There's not very much to do in way of uh, assembly. It comes without the stepper, mo stepper motors fitted. So that's a very simple task just to bolt those on. And uh, the control box equally is for well labeled on the back so you can't really go wrong. So this is my first steps um, with uh, playing with this device. So let's flash up the software and see how it works. This is the supplied software, this CNC USB controller and uh, there's all sorts of things to play with in here but first I just want to check the basic movement of the machine so here we have a little uh, joystick type uh, control pad so on, for example on the X axis if we tell it to, to go right ah! it's going left if we tell it to go positive in the Y direction, that's also reversed. Uh, so no surprise if we tell it to go down, it goes up. So to sort that out, we go to the file settings and under the axis control, uh, the second tab, we can see here the option to reverse the direction. So we need to check those boxes and OK it and now ah! all is good. Ah! So the next thing of interest is to see that it actually moves the correct distance. So if we put the ruler here on, the, on zero, if we zero out the axes here in the interface now it knows where zero is. In the box here, we can tell it, for example, this is um, G code. So if we tell it to move in the X direction, say 20 millimeters. It has in fact only moved 10. And similarly in the Y direction, go Y 20. And that's only 10 as well. So again, back into the settings. In that same tab, we can see at the top here the number of steps per unit. So that's currently set to 200 and it's going half. So let's make that 400 on each axis and OK that. So now we're at X and Y 10. So if we said go to um, zero, in fact we can do that with the control here. So go to zero X and Y, it returns to zero. So I think we're there. So just to test again, if we say X20, and Y20, And finally, say Z10. So the movement direction and distance is now correct. So let's find something to cut. I thought it would be fun to make a plaque of one of the uh, most iconic images of, of Spain, uh, the famous uh, Toro de Osborne, the, uh, the Osborne sherry and, uh, and brandy advertising from the 50s and 60s. I found on the interweb um, a copy of this in the .png graphics format. For our purposes, we need to put it into preferably SVG uh, or DXF so that we can transform from that scalable image 
uh, into G code to run on our CNC. The easiest way I found to do that is with a program cunningly called DXF to G code. So you can see that I've imported the image uh, as a DXF into this program and it generates uh, the different shapes that are, that are needed, just really two shapes for this particular item. And as we highlight the shape, we can see this outline in, in red. The indicator here is our, our 0, 0 for X and Y. So what I'm interested in is how big is this going to, uh, to be cut out? So if we follow the, uh, the red outline, it tells us the X and Y coordinates. So at the highest point here on the, on the horns, we can see that it is only 12.6 millimeters high. So it's, it's too small. The piece of material that I'm going to cut is 200 by 300 uh, millimeters. So we need to make it bigger. That's not a problem in this particular program. In the options, we have a scale factor. So if we said it's 12, um, 120 would be 10 times. Um, so if we say probably around 15, scale factor of 15. And now we look at it again. Now the tip of the horn is at 189 millimeters. So that fits within the 200 and the width out to its tail is 202. So that will fit comfortably on the piece of board that I'm going to cut. Having gotten the shapes that we want, um, we, we could eliminate that uh, if you wanted just the, the outline, but we'll, we'll, we'll keep it in. So the next step is with the export, optimize and export shape, and we can save it as our Toro de Osborne. And we can see here the file extension for, for G-code. So here we can see the resulting G-code file. And what we can do is to open it. I'm a big fan of this Notepad++ program. Uh, it's very versatile and uh, find other uses for it. But here we can have a look at the, the G-code. And as I have a 3D printer, I'm quite versed in, in reading this stuff now, but um, everybody will get used to it in time. So if we copy all of that, select all, and then copy, we can go to the G-code simulator and paste the code in here and simulate. So with this, we can play around looking at the, at the output. Um, what I'm interested in here, we can see that it confirms that our maximum X and Y parameters. Now the Z um, is the depth of cut, if you like. So we're going to need to change that according to the thickness of the material that we're going to cut. Having discovered that the cut is going to be minus 2.4, it's not going to be sufficient. So this is one of the reasons for running the code through these so that you can discover these things before you actually go ahead and cut it. So the actual thickness of the board is three millimeters. And I need really to have a nice cut. Um, it should go just a a small way beyond three millimeters. So th say 3.1 millimeters should be the depth of cut. We need to change the depth of cut to minus 3.1 millimeters. So we do that by going to the layer function in our DXF to G code. And we can see here the, the feed depth. So we change this to minus 3.1 also the final depth and then export optimize and export
here we can see that it has now changed the Z depth uh, when it's cutting to three point, minus 3.1 uh, millimeters. So that is good. So in here, we now select all and copy it. Go back to our G-code viewer and we can now clearly see the X and Y as before, but now the Z minimum is changed to minus 3.1. And now we're comfortable that our code is correct. We can go to the next stage of loading it into our CNC program. So that's simply a case of opening the G-code file, which is this one here. And there we can see it on our, our base plate. Over here we can see the G-code in the window here with our minus 3.1. So the next trick is to actually go ahead and, and cut it. And we need to be able to set the, the zero points so it's going to fit on the uh, material in use. To set up for the cut, I've just, uh, with some double-sided tape, stuck the, uh, the board down and Clearly the zero zero has got to be in the in the corner here. So with the power off we can easily move the, the stepper motors to where we need them to be. So that'll be our zero point. And for the height, I like to use just a little feeler gauge. And that will be our zeroing point. So in our CNC software, we've set these to zero, so we need to zero them out here in the, in the interface so that everything's clear as to where it's going to be. Now, with regards to the, the speed of the cut and the speed of rotation of the cut, um, this is very much um, up to experimentation. Um, this is just plywood, so it's not going to be particularly hard to cut and I'm going to set it to the the maximum spindle speed and leave it at this 250 millimeter per second um, cutting rate uh, which should be sufficient. Following the traditional carpenter's advice of measuring twice and cutting once we'll do a simulation of the of the tool path before we set the the cutter off. So this is at 00, zero xy but it's up at a safe distance so that it won't uh, hit the board because the, the spindle motor is not going to be running during this simulation. So in the software we can see that it's all zeroed out. So we'll switch the machine on and simulate the run. So clearly the simulation was successful and what I think I'll do is, as it was quite close to this edge here, is we will move the offset for the x-axis in slightly and we will leave the other zero point as it is. Now we'll time, it's time to set our zero point for the z-axis, which I like to use a an old feeler gauge. Let me know that we're getting close and just feed it in from there. And we'll be ready to roll. Going for the final cut now, we'll zero out all of the axes. Um, I'm going to be putting the spindle on, uh, on full speed and we'll see how it goes. And of course, safety first. So, it appears to be a successful 
cut, as we could see from the uh, piece of the, of the of the tail that uh, popped out at the end there. Let's just get it removed off the board. Here's our completed Toro, and uh, I'm very pleased as a as the first attempt. Um, okay, it's only in, in ply, so the, the the points are not quite as detailed, but uh, a bit of paint on there and. Uh, make an ornament or something out of it, and on to the next project. I hope you found that of interest.